Okay, Cooper Standard, this is the last one. So we put this out publicly on Fox Business on the claim and countdown on June 7th. It was trading at $6. We also uh, put it out publicly on the podcast in May. Uh, I was trading at, uh, our basis is 550. Uh, it traded down to, we started buying at six. It traded down to 358. Our basis is 550. Uh, so here's why we bought the company. So this stock is down. 141%, $141 down to, got down to $3.58. Why would we buy? There's obviously bankruptcy risk. So our bet was that there was a catalyst coming, they would get refinanced. Why were we confident that they would get refinanced in a crappy market like last year? Was because they had huge asset coverage. Remember balance sheet, you gotta look at the assets, meaning they could liquidate the whole company and the debt would be made whole. So who wouldn't take that deal if they could give them 10 or 13% money for the short term until they refinance it when credit, credit markets do? Uh, improve. So this is uh, the May June period. As you can see, very volatile. It's not evident in a monthly bar, but you know it is what it is. Uh, this, by the way, has come back down to 15. Just so you know, they reported on Friday. Uh, if you know anything about the auto industry, uh, sales were weak in December. So that was what they just reported: October, November, December. Sales jumped 5.9 percent. New car sales jumped 5.9 percent in January. So prospectively, but that's that's not the reason we're in the business. It's quarterly. The reason we're in the business, uh, first off, we buy the jockey, right? Are these scumbags that are going to take a deal from private equity and get, get new equity and screw the existing shareholders? Or these guys have a consistent history of respecting equity? Well, I talked to the company. Uh, management respects equity. They brought down the share count over the years uh, versus give themselves tons of stock and dilute the shareholders. Uh, their management comp, which is very unusual, is tied to return on invested capital. That's very important to me. I want to know that management can compound the invested capital that they've been given at a respectable rate, at least at the level that general indices can, and hopefully closer to the level that I can. So uh, third, the operating leverage in this business is unparalleled, coming out of industry troughs. Uh, fourth, the refinancing would get done through the asset covered. I got the idea because Charlie Munger did a same, the same trade in the 2001 recession. Auto business is very cyclical. These guys only supply to new car providers. Tenneco, which Buffett did, which uh, Munger did, supplied to new end use cars. Um, but Tenneco was down from like $18 in 2000 to a buck 61. They had the same risk, a billion dollars of debt to refinance. In 2001, no one thought they could get the refinancing done. There's an article in Barron's, Munger read it. He bought the stock at a buck 61 or something like that. Uh, he put 10 million in, turned it into 80 million over the next year and a half on the refinancing done. He gave that 80 million to Li Lu, the Chinese manager. Uh, Li Lu turned 80 into a half a billion. Two chess moves, half a billion dollars. So this repository of seeing thousands of things over the years of my career, I said, this is the exact same setup. I want to get involved. Um, and, uh, and that's it. The only difference was the asset coverage was better on this than it was on Tenneco when, when uh, Munger bought Tenneco. Because I didn't make the decision off an article in Barron's. But, um, uh, so that's Cooper Sand. Now, uh, they got the refinancing done, so this is kind of dated. Uh, there will now be no maturities before 2027. So we believe bankruptcy is basically off the table. All we have to do uh, is, so based on their operational improvement, flow of semiconductors, this whole thing was predicated on when the semiconductors come back. The reason we got into it in May, June is because we saw the semiconductor supply starting to come back as demand for phones and computers died down. They were reallocating their capacity utilization into auto chips. They didn't all come out overnight, but I knew once that started to flow, new car production would flow and they get paid every new car that's produced, okay? Uh, globally, they're like, they're top three in all these things. So, um, okay, now, and the average car on the road right now is 13.1 years. Uh, so, they're top three in ceiling systems, that goes around the windows, uh, freight, fuel, and brake delivery systems, fluid transfer systems. So number three globally, number two globally, and number one globally. So unlike the great financial crisis where original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, GM, Ford, et cetera, were, could care less if their suppliers went bankrupt because they went bankrupt, Ford didn't go bankrupt, but GM did and Chrysler did. This time, 
they've got more demand than they do supply, so they couldn't afford to have one of their top suppliers go bankrupt, and that's why they gave them pricing concessions and gave them in-based con uh, contracts, which means we're gonna get two bites at the apple. Not only the recovery in the industry, but actually the margin, margin improvement as well. Um, by the way, it's a, it's a covert, it's not in our model, it's a covert green play because on every ICE car, they, they give eight parts, on every EV, they do 20 parts. They make 20% more per EV car than for IC. I was worried, I'm like, auto parts, EVs, less parts, they're gonna get screwed. It's just the opposite because they do the cooling systems and all that other stuff. Um, so they got it done. So the stock shot up off that catalyst, that's nice. It was uh, up 300 something percent at one point. Now it's 200 and 200 uh, percent. But that's not why we're in the stock. Why we're in the stock? <laughs> this is what they did in 2017 based on a normalized auto production number. 3.6 top line, 456 million of EBITDA. On that, they earned $7.20 a share. So as, um, so this is their uh, guidance as of Friday. So they're gonna do about 150 to 175 million of EBITDA. Um, up from 37 million this year. Okay, so we believe that not only will they revert back to seven dollars a share, somewhere between five and eight, let's just say, uh, but they're going to have an increased margin because of the composition of the mix. Uh, and at eight dollars a share, their peak multiple at 2007 was trading at 141 was 20 times. Their trough multiple when they were earning was 10 times. Got it. And um, so, you know, even if you're conservative and you say they trade a trough multiple and they don't earn 70, they earn, they don't earn seven, they earn five. I think, it, you know, it's still, it's still attractive in our view. It's trading at $15 a share. Correct. Yeah. So it may, it may take a couple more days to cool off after the earnings and then, you know, there might, might be, you know, an opportunity. So um, that's our view and I think we're done. Any questions? So, oh, by the way, this just, just, just shows you, that was 2017, we got down to here, we're slowly climbing back up. We get to here, this is seven, eight dollars a share. Okay, anything, any questions before we wrap up? Yeah, yeah. So what's the uh, price target on standard based on For me? Yeah. Um, I mean, you just do the numbers in terms of like five to eight dollars at a 10 to 20 times multiple, and then cut it in half because you want to be conservative. Okay. So we'll lay some off at a 10 times multiple, we'll lay some off at 15, we'll hold some and, and wait for the euphoria as well as the design. So $50? Plus.